they look at the world, they know there's something not right. There's something that, that's, that's not um, the way they want it to be, and there's, they feel uneasy about it. But they try to placate those fears, not by facing them, but by trying to find a way of making them disappear with words like, oh, no, we would never allow a police state. Not in America, no, never allow a police state. Britain, never allow a police state. I wonder if they said that in Germany just a few decades ago. We never allow a, 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 a dictatorship in Germany. We're a land of freedom. And look what happened. In a few short years, they had a grotesque dictatorship. Um, and that's how fast it can come from the Weimar Republic to the uh, Nazi dictatorship in Germany by Hitler and company was a few years, not even a few decades. And the greatest weapon of any dictator is to divert attention from the people. So they're looking the other way and um, allowing the dictatorship to be built and imposed and all the infrastructure put in place. So by the time they absolutely have to face reality, it's all there, it's all done. What you see um, with people is that they're desperate to hear what they want to hear. And they're desperate for people to say, oh, no, no, these conspiracy theorists, they're all crazy, you know, they're all paranoid. It's not really going on. It's ridiculous. And th this is done to protect you. This is done for you. You know, we're the government. We care for you. This is why we're doing it. So you go to sleep, you know, watch the telly. There's a game on in a minute and you'll be fine. And we're just going to build another concentration camp. OK, see you later. Um, and what we need to do is stop this self-indulgence of picking up what we want to hear and trying to, trying to get ourselves to believe it. There's not a problem here. And actually look it in the face and realise that, if anything, George Orwell understated what we are heading towards unless we ste step up en masse and say, enough, no more. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm struggling to find words because words fail me. Um, the idea that uh, governments with their record have the interests of the people at heart. Um, anyone who believes that is, is basically a lost cause um, in terms of understanding what's happening in the world. Um, and I'll just leave them to get on with it. And uh, when the knock comes on their door, um, don't call me. Where's their power? Their power is in the people saying, oh, well, I don't like it, but it's the law, and so we better obey it. You know, OK, um, we've had a discussion, um, and we've decided we're going to introduce a law today where we're going to take our children, fr uh, your children from you, OK, and we're going to put them in a... Uh, a national education centre and we're going to control them and maybe you can see them twice a year, okay? We're passing the legislation this afternoon. Would you accept that? Would parents accept that? What would they do? They'd stand up and say, we're not having this. So there is a point then where, in, where people en masse will say, enough. It's just a case of when are we going to say that? Are we going to say it now while we still have some time to bring an end to this nonsense, or are we going to start saying we're not having that at the point when they're introducing legislation to take our children away? And by then, people, brave people who've stood up and been counted in the years before, while, while the others uh, just look the other way, they're actually not going to be around to speak on behalf of the people having their children taken away. So, are we going to make a stand now and draw a line in the sand and say here and no further, in fact, we're going to roll this back? Or are we going to wait until it's got really, really extreme, by which time there'll be so much infrastructure in place that 
drawing a line in the sand will be a serious challenge. And it's no good. I said to some policemen in Parliament Square a few months ago, ask yourself when your child says to you, Mummy and Daddy, what were you doing when the police state was introduced? Oh, oh, well, I was watching, um, I was watching the telly, honey. Or in the policeman's case, I was helping to introduce it, dear. That's the situation we're facing. And, and you know, if people don't like it, well, they just have to do the other thing, because this is how it is. And we either face it now, or we face it a little bit further along the road, when if we think it's not very good now, it'll be a bloody nightmare by then. It's time to lift the arse off the sofa and bring an end to this nonsense. Because otherwise, um, we're just building our own prison cell or sitting around. It's me, 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 me. Well, that's fine. But one day, I say to these people, me, me, me is going to knock on your door and you're going to realize that reality dawns and you're going to realize the world that by your silence when you had the opportunity you have allowed to unfold for the later years of your life and for most of the life of your kids and all the life of your grandkids first they came for the writers I didn't speak up because I was not a writer. Then they came for the students. But I didn't speak up because I was not a student. Then they came for musicians. But I didn't speak up because I was not a musician. Then they came for the Greeks, the Muslims, the trade unionists, the Christians, and the Jews, the travelers, the homosexuals, the journalists, the artists, the thuggers, the doctors, the philosophers, the economists, the anarchists, and the politicians, the nerds, the Europeans, the Americans, the communists, the hackers, the illegals, the homeless and I didn't speak up because I wasn't any of them any of them and then they came for me and there was no one left to speak up for me we don't have forever anymore this is not a projection this is now we need to wake up fast, and more importantly, we need to grow up fast, okay? We need some courage here. We need people to open their eyes, open their minds, and not concede and freeze to fear. It, it can be frightening what we're talking about here, but I tell you, it's more frightening when the knock comes on the door than if we start to, to, to uh, get involved now, uh, and we can start to uh, make... Um, it's much more difficult for that knock on the door to happen. Come on.
And I thought you said you were spiritual and you, 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 you let go of fear. Well, if you let go of fear, there's nothing to be frightened of, is there? We are consciousness. We are infinite consciousness. We are all that is, has been, and ever will be. What we're having at this time is an experience in a computer program uh, called Planet Earth and human, Humanity, right? That's what we're having. Now, whatever happens... In the, in, the, in, the, in the experience, we are still infinite consciousness, all that has been, is, and ever will be. But the question is, do you want to have an experience that's as deeply unpleasant as this one is going to be? Do you want your children and grandchildren to have that experience? Right? Because that's the question. And, and if you really are conscious, if you really are in touch with your, quote, higher self, then looking at the other way and conceding your right to act as necessary to fear is not going to happen, is it? The only time it's going to happen that you're going to uh, cons be consumed by fear or look the other way and convince yourself that there's nothing you should do because it's all negative, the only time that you're going to be in that mode is if you are not conscious. 
If you are not in touch with your quote, higher self, but if you are consumed by the body-mind, which sees everything in terms of uh, denial, everything in terms of fear. Um, and, um, you know, do you think infinite consciousness is, is, is going to look at the situation we're facing and say, it's negative, you must have focused on the good? No, it's going to say, I'm going to do what I know to be right. And what we know to be right in the face of a tyranny is to not concede ourselves to the tyranny. Peaceful, non-violent, non-cooperation, because this tyranny can only um, be imposed upon us if we uh, concede ourselves to allow it. The, 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 the people in full knowledge of what's going on and what they're doing, compared to the global population, is a handful. The global population, we are told, is about 7 billion people. And the 7 billion are the, are the, uh, the, the, the people who are subjected to this uh, horror by the handful of people who in full knowledge are doing it. It can only happen with our acquiescence. There is not enough of them to do it without our acquiescence. And they have to get us to don uniforms and don dark suits to act as agents for the few to impose the will of the few upon the many. And those people in uniform and dark suits who are doing this, you look at your children and grandchildren in the eye as well, and you tell them that you can justify what you're doing uh, in, in relation to the world they're going to have to live in. You're helping to bring it in. What are you doing? We, we need to um, stop being in denial and start looking this in the eye. And then the billions can sort out the few who are seeking to impose a horror movie upon the, the, the rest of us. We can do it, but only if we come together and get out of denial and stop the excuses of it's negative, must focus on the positive. You know what, what's positive? What's positive thing to focus on? This tyranny not completing what it wants to complete. Tell me something more positive than that at this time. <laughs>